Hi there, welcome to my new video. Uh, my name is Brenda Bakker, I'm from Holland. English is not my native language, but I'll try. And I want to show you how I do my watercolor style like lettering. Um, I use several brushes from several brands. It's not necessary uh, to need that uh, brand. There are several brushes uh, in which you can get the same effect. Slightly different though. Um, I'm particularly fan of the watercolor brushes uh, from iPad Lettering. Also her canvas brushes I will be using and some of Kristen April Frey. Uh, I did this piece of lettering with the standard brush pen which is in your uh, Procreate bundle when you receive the program Pro uh, Procreate. And I'm going to show you how I do my latest work. I use a color swatch uh, uh, with blue and greenish colors. I like them a lot. And I... I um, how do you say it in English? I'm sorry for that. I can't find the right words. I cheat a little with uh, using the canvas brushes on the watercoloring piece. So that's what I do. But I'm going to show you uh, my technique and how I do it. And then you can use the brushes you want. And there are a lot of different styles and a lot of different ways uh, for you to get there. But I show you mine. So this is one layer. I've only got one layer. This is the texture layer, a texture layer uh, which comes with the uh, watercolor uh, canvas from iPad lettering. You don't need that, so I'm going to close it. I just made one layer, the word love, uh, with the actual brush pen from uh, brush pen from Procreate. And I'm going to put it in alpha lock because I don't want to get out of the letters in the first time and alpha lock uh, makes it happen that you can't draw outside the lines. Then I want to take this selection and I want I don't want to paint on this actual layer, so I take it in selection and create another layer. So everything I selected here, um, I take with me on this next layer. And because I'm going to work with colors, it's hard to see when I wrote it on, uh, when I color on black, I'm going to make this not seeable. But you see the lines from the selection and now the word love, I hope you can see it. Yeah, you can slightly see. The word love is now uh, kept in white. So we have the selection, but on a, new can uh, on a new layer. And then I'm going to choose some colors. Here I have the six different colors I work with, but I don't use them all six. Um, I'm now turning over to the canvas brush set from iPad Lettering because I like it a lot what they do and I use the canvas was number two I select the dark blue I don't know why <laughs> I, I turn back to that color all the time so I have the brush canvas brush uh, the canvas wash number two in the blue color and on layer two I just go and uh, make some nice color depths so not hard it isn't hard when you see it then I change into another type of blue and I'm going to mix it with a little green. So, the green. And I go over it just until I like it. So there have to be a little bit color everywhere, otherwise I can't, can't blend it. Now I think this is too much green, so I'm going to turn back to blue again. Mm, this one. Now I think it's too dark, so I can take a color white and go slightly over it again. If I don't push hard, I have a little wash, so the color gets back. And with that I can play a little. And sometimes I just make it smaller. And, well, just until I like it. It's different every time I do it. I, I don't have... A, any particular reason why I do something, it's just until I like it. Like so. I think it's uh, good looking now, but I think it's uh, way too dark for me. So I end up with a little wash over it. Just not tapping very hard, just a little bit. Why doesn't it work? Uh, sometimes I'm in the wrong layer. No, it's getting, it's getting here. I layer it a little bit, a little bit white. 
just a little bit lighten it up. So now I like the color. Um, I also like a little bit of how it blends, but for the actual watercolor look, you have to blend it a little more. I go back to the um, smudging tool and use the same brush of the canvas wash number two. It's already selected. And I've lowered the opacity in this case. So I want to blend it a little. You see, the colors are going to blend very nicely. So the rough edges are going to get out of your way. Just a little. So it's nicely a nice flow of the color. So now I actually like, and it looks like a watercolor already, but we're going to do some more. So. With this one, I'm satisfied. Uh, that I can choose the to see. Uh, let you show with the black layer, but it's too dark. I don't like it. So we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna. We're not gonna do anything with it until the end for making the shadows. So we just leave this off and go uh, on work with the layer we just made with the coloring we just made. Now I still have it in selection from everything I have here. But I'm going to add another layer and make that layer into uh, overlay. Then I chose black, choose black. And for the brushes, we can use from the watercolor set, from advanced watercolor set, the watercolor edges. I usually uh, use another brush for this, but this one is fine, but I've used it for two times now, so I'm not very used to it. I'm going to make uh, dark edges around these layers. And because I chose black in overlay mode, it's going to make a little shadow, a little darker, but it's going to use the colors underneath it. You can also choose dark blue, dark green, uh, and but then you have to switch colors all the time. And when you do it in overlay, you only have to choose black. And make sure it's not too big because you only want to do the edges and I don't want to have it too hard, so not quite opaque. And I'm just going around the edges of the letters. You see, make a little, no, it's too small now. I want it a little bigger because I'm going to blend it also. A little bigger, go around the edges. It can be done quite fast. Don't be too secure about it, not so clean. It's more uh, great when you do it roughly. So it doesn't have to take so much time. But I like this process of this because it makes it turn so realistic as possible. Uh, or as much as possible if I can do it with the time. I don't want to spend hours and hours on... Uh, creating such a piece of this, like this. So, a little bit more here. It's too much. So, you can see, it's a little bit darker. And here's it green, and here, and when it's darker green, it's almost turned black. So, um, the more dark your color is underneath, the more uh, blacker it's gonna get in overlay. Now I'm going to take the smudge tool again, and it's still in the whitewash. And now I'm going slightly to make this a little bit softer, blend it in. But always keeping the edges a little bit darker. And again, this doesn't have to be uh, very strict. Just like how you, <coughs> pardon me, how you like it. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Sometimes I don't know what to say, so I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Sorry for that. And sometimes I'm going to keep talking to myself. Ah, no, I don't like that. Or just undo it. Well, here you can see what I'm doing, so I like it. 
it's not hard work it's not uh yeah time uh time how do you say it i don't know what to say it doesn't take much time oh, i like it now i'm gonna add another layer and still keeping it selected so i'm still working with everything i've done here so i don't go outside of the lines new layer also in overlay and then i turn to another brush it's from Kristen Apple Frey. I like it a lot. She made a lovely water pool. And uh, okay, here it is. And I'm going to use it in black and also in white because I want to play with like different hard lines within the watercolor. And not quite as big and not quite as opaque. So when I do it here, I'm gonna show you for you. One, let you see what's what it does. You see like a little dark circle and it makes some shadow and when you do this uh, you can change the, the, the variety in, in, in wideness of it but my camera is not very handy for me <laughs> I can't change it just like this but make sure it's not too big that you can round and it, it turns in both different letters it's not natural looking so now I've made a few darker ones in the overlay and I'm going to do that also in white. And mostly I brighten the letters a little. So I choose a little wider and you can see what it does. And it can overlap a little over um, uh, above the black ones, it doesn't matter. I like this style. I use this a lot. And sometimes when I think the letters are too dark, I do a huge overall. Well, I like it like this. That's okay with me. I'm going to add another layer. And sometimes I like to pop in a little bit uh, of the white splatters. Also from the watercolor advanced set, iPad lettering. Uh, some splatter dots. And not too white because I don't want it to be... Um, when I like a white paint I want it to be like some water drops so also the opacity is a little bit down make the bundles a little bit lighter and okay did I choose it yeah why doesn't it work too opaque for me perhaps yeah now it's coming now you see a little bit like it's white but not too bright when I do it in much opacity it's like I do it with white paint. I don't want that effect. So bring the opacity down again. <clears throat> you just want to play with it a little. I think it's too small. Make them a little larger. And when you uh, overview it, you can always turn down the opacity of the whole layer if you don't think it's not quite bright enough. I think it's too, this is too bright and I haven't done much so I can go back. I love this kind of stuff. I like also like the blending. I love these colors. So I think it's okay right now. And now I've done everything I have to do about the watercolor lettering. So I'm going to make another layer and I get rid of the selection. And now you can see what it's like on real paper, or at least on the watercolor canvas. When you close up, you can see it. I like it a lot. Now I'm going to make those white highlights. Turn in white. Um, for... The easy way you can do uh, the, yeah, I made an own pencil, uh, the medium tip brush. It's from the fine tip, but then I make it a little bigger, so I tweaked it a little. Nothing more, nothing less. Opacity all the way up, not too thick, not too thin. And for me, the sun is always coming from the upper left side and the shadows on the lower right side. So everything I'm going to highlight is on the upper left corner of the of the letter. 
All right, I'm a new layer again. Yeah. And so, just join the letter a little. Mm -hmm. No, I, I've been working on the speed for another streamline, for another piece what I work with. And so, just follow the, the roundings of the letter a little. No, it's not quite what I like. Now this I like. And now for the shadow, something, something very simple. I take this one, but you know, when I turn it off, it's too dark. So I take this one and color it white. So I select the layer again. Well, it's an awful lock. I'm going to make that down right away. Uh, select. And then I fill the layer. And now these letters are white again. So I don't have to bother for any other colors underneath. Now I duplicate this one again. And I'm going to turn that black again or grayish. But by, I can always, with the opacity, turn it down. i show you in a minute. In a minute. Um, okay, so I have to select the underlaying layer. Select. I have it in black. Now I'm going to fill layer with black. But now it's not as dark because I've got a white layer underneath the coloring. So you can't see the black through the color layer. And this one I'm going to move with the arrow a little bit to the right down corner. Like this one. Yeah, I like it. And then I'm going to play with the opacity because I wanted to have a uh, a realistic, as realistic as when I do it with a Tombrow uh, Tombro brush number N95, which is my favorite in actual brushes. I'm going to lower the opacity and bring it down. Almost 8%, but I like it. Well, 8 to 10%. This is a color I could have when I do, do it on uh, real paper. It's now 10, I'll bring it back to 8, I like 8 more. It's not a lot of difference, but it's just, yeah, you have to feel like it. Oh, 7%, I like it like this. And sometimes it's also nice to give it a little uh, bit uh, blurring away with the Gaussian blur. You go to the, the wand, Gaussian blur, and slide a little, little bit, little bit. You can make uh, shadows. Oh, it's an alpha lock, so it doesn't work. <laughs> I have to put up alpha lock first. I always forget that piece. Go to the wand, Gaussian blur, and just slide a little. You can see it, it fades away. Now it's not on the paper. It comes off of the paper because the shadow is fading away. When you have a shadow all the way tight, then you it's like you uh, drew it on the uh, draw it on the paper. So this is how I do my lettering, and then for something I really like, uh, the background splattering. I always turn this uh, on the most back side of the paper, yeah? the layer on above it is more on top, and the layers down is, uh, down is underneath the lettering. So when I splash and I do it uh, accidentally over the lettering, it's no harm done because it's uh, laying under the letters on my paper because the layer is much lower. Now I'm going to turn back splattering and I take some splattering again. Um, they could be darker because I've done it with a whitewash so sometimes I bring back the opacity a little. And then I go to the splatter brush from the watercolor sets from iPad lettering again, the IPL splatter dots and oh, just a little splattering here and here's a little blue and I've done some green so and always remember for my videos I showed before 
always make a new layer and put down your own watercolor mark in it. Oh, I got a new mar a mark made for the Dutch Procreate Lettering, which is our group, our Dutch group on Facebook. It's very lovely. It's growing. It's growing, getting bigger. Free brushes, some tutorials, but everything in Dutch. But we make it as bright as possible for everyone. And let's make a color. I want to use the blue. Blue one again for the stamp. Always do it on a new layer so you can uh, choose where you can place it or make adjustments. Oh, I hate it when it happens. But I learned a new trick. Hold your thumb or your finger and now you can change it. The bar is always in my way. Huh? Thanks for the tip from my former video. So, and this is how I do my watercolor lettering like this, this style. So I hope you enjoyed it and made it clear to you on how I do my watercolor. I love some pieces in particular. The, you can see uh, the, the water pools. Oh, stamp. You can see the water pools here and you can see the light of the, the, the water drops. You can see the shadows, the highlights. And sometimes I think, oh, this is a great piece. This is the, the right coloring I want. Hi Chantal. <laughs> and well, this is how I do it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you like it. And give you a thumbs up and follow me on my channel on YouTube. And if you have any questions, you know where you can find me. Thank you.